In this video, we're going to step through a problem that will be a simple sequence problem and then implement it in App Inventor. So here is the problem. A program should compute the mowing time of for a yard. The length and width of the yard are known, as well as the fact that the mowing rate is two square yards per minute. Of course, the house sits in the yard, so do not include that square footage of the house when computing the mowing time. The length and the width of the house are given. So I'm going to come over here and figure out what exactly they want, and the output will be the mowing time. That's the objective of this program. And what are known? What are my known items? And I know the length and width of the yard. Let me call that yard length and yard width, and I also know the house length and house width. Okay, and so how do I get from my inputs to my outputs? Well, I'm going to use something called the intermediate variables. And these intermediate variables are variables used not to, to hold the input, not to hold the output, but to hold data between the input and calculating the output. So what I need to know is the house area, and that's going to be equal, equal to my house length times my house width. And I also need to know the yard area, and that's going to be equal to my yard area, Oops, excuse me, my yard length and times my yard width. Finally, well, no, not finally. Next, I will need to know the uh, area to mow. So this is going to be my yard area minus my house area. Now that I know how much I'm going to mow, it takes two square yards per minute that's going to be a division. So my mowing time, I'm going to create a variable called mowing time, and that's going to be equal to my area to mow divided by 2. Okay, so now let's come down here and write the pseudocode. What variables do I need? What data type that will they be? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and make them all real. Okay, let me write start first. Okay, start, and my variables are going to be real and they will be my input variables, yard length, yard width, yard width, in addition I have my intermediate variables and they're going to be house area and yard area and area to mow. Yeah, I will also need this variable for output, the mowing time. Okay, now let's go ahead and get my inputs. So I'm going to get the yard length and I'm going to get the yard width and also the house length and the house width. Now I'm ready to calculate. Okay, now I have my calculations in and I'm ready to do my output. And so what I'm going to output is the mowing time. Okay, so now I'm going to use this pseudocode to help me write my App Inventor program. Okay, we're in App Inventor and I've got these four inputs, but I'm going to use a text box. I'm going to go to the Layout tab and grab a table arrangement. When you have your table arrangement selected, you can indicate how many columns and how many rows. So since I have four inputs, I'm going to go ahead and select four rows. Now I'll come up and I will drag my labels and my text boxes. So as you're dragging the label, you'll notice you get to the top left corner, you get the blue outline and you can drop it. And you same with the text box. And this helps you to lay out your GUI. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and choose my table arrangement and set the width to fill parent. So it'll go all the way across. So I'm going to go through for each of my labels and I'm going to create a prompt for the yard length and each of the items needed. Okay, I've entered values into the labels and now I'm looking at my toe chart to help me determine what I'm going to call each of these text boxes. So I'm going to select the text boxes and assign the uh, name I gave the object in the toe chart. Here I'm selecting the first text box and over here in the components I'm going to go to rename and rename it to the first text box. So I'll rename each of these items in my toe chart with the same name I assigned in the toe chart. Now I have added, I have renamed each of these text boxes according to the toe chart. You will see that I've also got the calculate button added. I've put the calculate button in a horizontal arrangement and that's over here in the layout section where the table arrangement is. So I put that in a horizontal arrangement. Notice that I set the width to fill parent so that makes it go all the way across and then I set the horizontal alignment of the horizontal arrangement to center and that allows me to center the button. Done this with the output too and I should rename this. So my toe chart I said I was going to call this mowing time label and so let's rename that to mowing time label. Okay and likewise I have put that in a horizontal arrangement. I'm now going to take the text out and so right now you won't see it. It will disappear. Okay, let me go ahead and set the height since that went down. I'll, I'll make it about 30 pixels high. Okay, and so the output will display um, after the calculate button's clicked. Now let's go ahead and click on the blocks and we're ready to now create an event procedure for the calc button. So I'm going to click on this calc button and this is the click event for my event procedure. Now let's take a look at the variables I'm going to need. Okay, I'm going to need eight variables. Now there are other ways to do this, but I want to go ahead and follow the format of the pseudocode. So you get the idea that the pseudocode does lead you into creating these variables. So I need eight variables. I'm going to go ahead and drag eight of these. I have eight variables. Click here. Now it's time to rename them. Okay, so now each of these variables has been renamed. I'm going to go ahead and give each of them an initial value of zero. Now let's take a look. Here are the variables I declared in my pseudocode. And here is my event handler and all of the local variables, the same as what we have in the pseudocode. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the input from the text boxes and assign it to our variables. To do that, we will grab some sets. We need four of them. Since we're getting input from four variable for four variables. And then we'll come down and we'll select each of these text boxes and find the text property and find the text property with the socket to the left. Okay, so this is for the yard length. We'll go ahead and do it for the yard width. Make sure you're selecting the text property here because that's going to be what's holding the input. Let's take a look again 
and these four statements here correlate to these four statements in your pseudocode. Okay, so now let's take a look at our four assignment statements that are in our processing step. What we're going to do is, like before, we're, we need to set variables just like you did here. But instead of getting the data from the text boxes, we're getting the data from other variables. And we'll be doing some mathematical calculations. So let's grab, we'll need four of them, four more set statements. And for the first statement here, we need the multiplication operator. I'm going to come up to the math drawer and grab out the multiplication. And we're going to multiply the house length and the house width. So this house area is going to be set to, now we're going to get the variable. So on the right hand side of the assignment statement, you're doing a get. On the left hand side, it's a set. So we'll grab two of these gets, and one that we're getting will be the house length, and the other will be the house width. Okay, now we're ready to do the yard area. We'll grab two more of those gets to get two more. Well, not yet. Got to do multiplication again. So we need to grab the multiplication block, and we're going to do the yard length and the yard width. Okay, the next one is area to mow. This time we need a subtraction block. Okay, and so the variables we need are yard area and house area. So two more gets because we're on the right hand side of the assignment statement, we'll do gets. And we're going to get the yard area and subtract from that the house area. And we need to set that to the area to mow. Finally, our mowing time. And for this one, we need a division. Okay, so I need to get a variable, the area to mow variable, and I'm going to divide it by the constant 2 or the numeric literal 2. Okay, and now as you see, these assignment statements are handled right here. Well, it looks like the last thing I need to do is to assign to my output label. So my output label is called mowing time and I'm setting the text property. So I'm going to do a set and uh, for right now I'm just going to put a number here and I am going to get the mowing time and output it to the label. I'm thinking it might, that might not be the best format, but let's see what that looks like. Okay, here we're in Excel and I've added some testing values, test cases. I'm going to test for zero right now. And as you see, the output is zero. Again, not the best format. Now let's go with the second test case. For the second test case, we got values of 30 and 30 for the yard length and the yard width and 25 and 20 for the house length and the house width. Okay, and testing and you see it comes up with 200 which is the expected result. 